Over the past decade, cars have been recognized as the most dangerous kind of transport. But today, everything is changing. Active safety systems, which are used in modern cars, are already saving lives. They can keep the car on track in any weather, warn about dangers, and even perform emergency braking for the driver. So how do these smart electronic assistants work? Today, we will test them. Almost an autopilot, how does it feel to completely trust a smart car driving itself? Holy cow! That's crazy! This is probably the scariest thing that I've faced lately. Brake if you can. Why do electronics work faster than a person? Alex, I think he needs help. Well, he lost his head for sure. What is happening to the human body while driving, science-wise? It feels nice to be among the people whose modest contribution will build the victories of F1 racers in the, well, not too distant future. To be honest, I really want to test these new safety systems in field conditions. Are they really that smart? And does the driver really need them? And my helping hand with this is a car expert, Vitaly Kabyshev, an instructor of the Driving Skills Center. Hi! Tell me please how you can, as an experienced driver, assess how much the use of modern active safety systems can reduce the number of accidents on the roads. If we talk about such systems as ABS or a stability system, these systems allow to reduce the number of emergency situations related to the loss of stability, that is, drift and skid, by about 80%. Well, the ABS system has been in use for more than 30 years, and here... Yes, and it is improving. New algorithms appear. Tell me, please, if we are talking about active cruise control, not a pilot in common parlance. And as I understand, you cannot yet choose a point in the navigator so that the car itself would go there, but on the road, so I get in the car and I trust the car completely, take a book and begin to read. That is, Alex, in fact, the most dangerous delusion, really. This is not an autopilot, it's just an assistant. In some emergency situations, let's say the driver falls asleep at the wheel or gets distracted by, for example, an SMS, which should never happen, and correct the movement trajectory based on the edges of a road or a marking. It's by no means an autopilot, it's just an assistant. The active cruise control system consists of a control unit and long and short range radars emitting electromagnetic waves and receiving a reflected signal. They scan the environment around the car. This information is continuously transmitted to the control unit. Thanks to the work of this safety system, the car can independently maintain speed and control the distance to the objects in front of it. And if the distance becomes dangerous, the system gives warning signals to the driver and can even perform an emergency braking. Can we use this wonderful car to find out how effectively this car can emergency brake and take the corners with and without this electronic assistant? And just then we can compare. Of course, let's try. Get in. So we are on the road, how can I get attached to this minibus and stop worrying about the gas pedal? So here, start the active cruise control by pressing this button. Can I? It doesn't work. Here is a car icon. So the radar sees the situation in front of the car. But since we have a small limit, it needs to be raised. For example, up to 90 km per hour. Here. I'm not touching the gas now. Yes, the car is accelerating on its own, and now it will move just behind the car ahead, in the tracking mode. Wow. And now let's perform an experiment and find out how the adaptive cruise control behaves if the car ahead suddenly brakes. Brake, 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 brake here. 
So this is what we wanted to see. It is actively braking. The car began to brake by itself, yes, but the driver still needs to make the final stop. That is, to put the brake on, the belt restrained me. Absolutely true, because the driver should prepare to possible consequences. The car was preparing for a hit. It took the system less than a second to react to the extreme situation. In such a short time, not only have the electronics managed to warn me with a sound signal, but they've limited the fuel supply too, forcing the engine wheels to slow down even before I ground down onto the brakes. So the brake, that is, do I still need to hit the brake? Yes, you do. You have to brake, and it's the driver who has to make the decision on emergency braking. So the system begins to brake by itself. Here, by the way, it has activated the emergency stop signal. In fact, yes, when you reach the deceleration of 0.8 g, the emergency stop signal is activated. In other words, the system starts to brake without the driver's participation. But when it's necessary to make a decision about the final stop, it waits for the driver to make it, right? Absolutely right. Close following while driving in a traffic flow is one of the most common causes of road accidents. But perhaps the most alarming data is the statistics of accidents involving pedestrians. Although the number of such accidents in Moscow has decreased in recent years, it still remains very high. Over 32,000 collisions with pedestrians have been registered since the beginning of 2016 it is possible that the number of such accidents will be smaller in the near future. In any case, the function of preventing a collision with a pedestrian was added to the arsenal of modern active safety systems. And right now, we will check whether it works as effectively as car makers say. Of course, we will carry out this experiment on the testing site. Having activated this function, Vitaly Kabashev and I will move in a straight line at a speed of 40 km per hour. At some point, a moving cardboard silhouette will come from behind one of the obstacles. We do not know from which one. Will the automatics be able to react to a sudden obstacle? Let's see. So, accelerating to 40 km per hour. And I took my foot off the brake. Everyone seems to be alive. Holy cow, that's crazy. You know, probably this is the scariest thing that I've had to go through lately. It's good that we are not in the city and this is a cardboard man. Well, well, there is about 25 centimeters left. Very scary. Yes, and it is so against the physiology of driving, which develops over the years, to remove the food from the brake in anticipation of a collision with something. And so the car did everything itself. Well, by the way, I'm not sure that we would be able to stop if the speed was higher. Simply surface traction physics and the inertia of the car wouldn't let us do it. That's right. Well, the system itself still has a reaction time. About 0.2 or, or 0.3 seconds are needed for the analysis of what is happening. It took the car less than a half second, not only to recognize the obstacle, but also make the decision on an emergency stop. Thanks to the joint work of the radar, which is located behind the front grid, and a stereo camera installed behind the windshield, they continuously scan and analyze the 150-meter area in front of the car. But what would be the outcome of this test if the driver, that is, me, had to make a decision on his own? Vitaly, at what speed does the system work? Not all systems are created equal. Here you need to look at the manufacturer, at the brand. In fact, you can move around the city at such speeds that nothing will help. Like in this case. Let's go and see. Alex, I think he needs help. Well, he lost his head for sure. Listen, but why did this happen? In fact, you did everything right, and you did everything you could. The thing is, the reaction of a person who is sitting behind the wheel, being more or less ready, traveling around the city, in a familiar or unusual situation, is about 0.8 to 1 second. Therefore, you needed time to realize what was happening before you hit the brake pedal. 
I saw the braking was very effective. The brake assist helped you. A brake assist is a system that hits the brake for me. It's a system that, if I don't push the pedal hard enough, yes, it increases the pressure in brake lines during emergency braking and thus reduces the reaction time of the system. It was an emergency braking at the limit of traction, but as you see, accordingly, we simply didn't have enough distance so that you could react adequately. So we didn't have enough time. It, it took a person too long to react. This test showed that the safety system works much faster than any driver. But could I demonstrate a better result? Is the human brain able to make decisions faster than in a second and a half to two seconds in an emergency situation? What scientific research I have participated in and what happens to the body of a driver, you will know in a moment. I have come to the Moscow State University, and here, at the Department of Higher Nervous Activity, I am going to participate in a unique study. Russian scientists are at the forefront of the world in their attempts to create a driver's telemetry, that is, to describe everything that happens in the human body while driving in great detail. To understand how the human brain functions on a racing circuit, to identify the markers of optimal piloting, to detect deviations in the general functional state of a human organism that interfere with achieving better results, these are only some of the many goals that scientists from the Moscow State University have set for themselves. All the secrets of driver's physiology are revealed on the racing simulator. The participants of the study are racers of various series and professional drivers. Daria. Hello, Alexander. As I understand it, this is the place where you do your research. Yes. Which parameters can you measure during these virtual races? We record brain activity, heart rate, breathing, muscle tension, and eye movements. And do these parameters somehow differ from the parameters measured during other activities? Yes, they are different. At certain points of racing around the track, for example, turns or straight lines, we actually see activity that is related to certain functions, coordinates calculation, and so on. And how can this data be used? Well, first, it can be used in riders' training. Well, for example, if we detect a pattern that precedes the mistakes, well, for example, it may appear before the corner that the driver fails to negotiate, then you can train the rider to generate the appropriate activity. To build the most accurate map of the brain's electrical activity, 19 electrodes are placed on the head and two on the ears of each study participant. By the way, to date, there have been very few studies on recording an electroencephalogram while driving a car or a simulator, so the test I'm taking part in is unique. Well, we've got everything set up. The sensors on the head register the brain, the potential difference, in fact. The sensors on the forehead record the muscular tension of the frontal muscle. The reason why this muscle is because it reflects the general muscle tone. I will spend the next hour behind the wheel of the simulator. That is the time the experiment participants need to adapt to unfamiliar driving conditions and the track itself. In the meantime, Daria needs to catch all the changes that occur in my body and identify the piloting patterns. We are observing specific activity in occipital leads. It is apparently individual. We also see the breathing channel. Alexander is breathing quite evenly. He doesn't hold his breath, and uh, that in general is the most important thing. Here, by the way, before the turn and during the turn, we can see that the breathing has changed and uh, there was a slight breath hold. It means that a person is quite tense and this situation is not familiar to him. Well, really, this track is unfamiliar to him. Here is the activity that we investigate. It occurs under the electrodes located on the forehead, and it is most likely connected with the calculation of the coordinate of the deceleration point or the point of maximum acceleration. By the way, Alexander blinks quite often. Apparently, most of my blinks happened in the corners, and this was probably the reason that I repeatedly came off the track. According to scientists, loss of eye contact with the track 
indicates that the driver is poorly focused, and this inevitably leads to an error. Daria, well, what can you say? How hopeless am I? Well, everything is not so bad, actually. The picture is very similar to that of drivers who have the experience of driving a car with a manual transmission, but not the riders. Can we tell my reaction time before the turn by these diagrams? With some assumption, we do not know for sure whether this activity is related to the decision-making, but the hypothesis is that it is. Now we are going to find it somewhere before the turn and just count the latent time. Well, let's say here's the rhythm emerging, and it is expressed very poorly because you haven't yet rolled into the track, mm -hmm. as the riders say. Well, if we start from the first appearance of this pattern and hypothetically accept it for the moment of making the decision, then the time is one and a half seconds. Similar results were demonstrated by other participants from the group of everyday drivers. It turns out that one and a half seconds to react in extreme conditions is the norm for an untrained person. A second and a half, isn't it too much for racers? It is too much for the riders, yes, but the problem is that our assumption is hypothetical, that is, we need additional tests to confirm, or not to confirm, that this activity is connected with some calculations. But this remains to be done. This is only the initial stage of the work. And then we will deal with the detailed processing and formulation of the conclusions. It feels very nice to be among the people whose modest contribution will build the victories of F1 racers in the, well, not too distant future. By the way, racers whose skills of maneuvering in extreme conditions are almost a reflex require an average of five to seven tenths of a second to react to a new event. But even if I improve my performance with training, it's unlikely that I'll ever be able to develop the ability to see what's happening behind my back. And after all, often the driver just cannot do without a surround view. According to statistics, every fifth accident occurs when maneuvering in close quarters in yards or in a parking lot. The reason is the driver cannot see and evaluate the entire situation around the car, even relying on rear-view mirrors and parking sensors. In modern cars, this problem is solved by several electronic assistants. So the intelligent surround vision system allows you to assess the situation 360 degrees around the car with the help of video cameras in the rear-view mirrors, in the front and in the back of the vehicle. The resulting image can be manipulated it can be rotated around the vertical axis with use of a gesture control system and with the function of detecting vehicles moving in the transverse direction. The driver can promptly receive a warning about an impending danger. It turns out modern cars are able to avoid collisions. Let's try to find out whether this security system works effectively through an experiment. In a parking lot, the car is driven in reverse, but a solid obstacle on the left doesn't let the driver see another traffic participant. Come on. Let's go, 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 go. Stop. Stop. Does the system stop the car automatically? This car doesn't have this function, but hypothetically, this is possible. So there are some cars that stop without the driver's help. Absolutely right. Accordingly, here the radar warns you of approaching from the left, and here the danger could be determined on the red scale. The danger could be determined by your intonation at that moment. Yes, I was frightened. Anyway, the system has showed us, plus an indication on the left side of the screen, and in general it was possible to see the car that was going from around the corner. What are we going to do with a car manufactured in 1982 on the set of a movie about modern safety systems? You'll learn right now. We have been testing the active safety systems in sufficiently nice conditions. Now let's check them in a hard way. Vitaly, I suggest you demonstrate the effect of safety systems in comparison. As an experienced driver and an instructor, you will drive this magnificent 1982 coupe, which doesn't have any safety system, neither an ABS nor course stability, and sure no radars. 
This is scary, but this car will be driven by you, an experienced driver, an instructor of driving skills, and I'll drive this car, and we'll see whether the safety systems can compensate for my lack of extreme driving skills. It's probably better to call it protective driving. Let's try! To understand how much assistance is provided to the driver by modern active safety systems, Vitaly and I will take a ride along this highway. It includes eight right and left turns of different curvature and complexity category. Going along the route of such a difficult configuration, the car may easily go into an uncontrolled drift, even on a dry surface. Let's go. Well, it seems simple. Tire covers whistle. But the car is like crawling on rails. The seat belt is pulling me back because the car thinks that I want to hit something. Well, that was almost a skid, but the car has coped with it. Now, here's a hairpin turn. Everything kind of crunches, but anyway, the car remains on the track. So, here's a sharp turn, and there will now be an unexpected obstacle. Here it is. Well, what can I say? Whew, that was fun. It's easy. To be honest, I'm even surprised that this challenge turned out to be so easy for me. Despite the rather high speed, the car entered the sharp turns very smoothly. I was even laid back. It seems that the intellectual system of stabilization and the system of roll compensation were proactive. I didn't feel a single drift or skid. Let's see if this challenge is as boring for Vitali. Judging by the smoke from under the tires, you had a hard time. Well, of course, it wasn't easy. When you're driving, cadence braking for the turn and during braking was carried out by ABS, EBD and many other interesting algorithms. Yes, my own leg carried out the cadence braking. And this was not always effective, in fact. The smoke from under the tires is a sign of inefficiency. At the final stage, you had quite a severe skid. And it was obvious that it was difficult for you to control the car. That is, your trajectory was quite... Here, I didn't notice this. Well, because in your car, that was the stabilization system that managed the drifts. And in this case, I had to manage any drifts on my own. That is, accordingly, turn the steering wheel in the direction of rear part skid. And again, even after practicing here, I didn't do it perfectly. Modern active safety systems really make the driver's life much easier, and I personally have witnessed that. However, it is still too early to trust them 100%. It means that engineers still have something to work on, and we, drivers, should not forget that the car, as the traffic rules say, is a vehicle of serious danger.